as a part of J2SC they released it ok JDBC they released as a part of J2SC in our Java standard edition itself they released this JDBC instead of giving under J2EE they given JDBC under J2SC itself in our core Java itself they given JDBC API for what they given this JDBC in core Java API itself if you want to make any standalone applications if you want to make any standalone applications by using Sphinx ok if you are going to make a Sphinx GUI let's say if you have one user interface Java application if you want to make a Java application Java standalone applications from here if you want to store some fields in database something name email ok whatever it is if you want to store this data in database using JDBC API you can store the database you can store this data into database so that this JDBC API they given under J2 SC itself as a part of J2 SC itself this JDBC API they released and coming to the surlets part surlets are from J2 double E the surlets they released as a part of J2 double E in our Java 2 enterprise edition they given this surlets and this JDBC is from J2 SC itself so by using JDBC what we can do a Java application it can talk with databases so let's say if you have requirements like if you want to store data and if you want to retrieve data or if you want to update data from java application if you want to store data to store data to update data and to retrieve data to retrieve and if you want to make any operations like delete operations delete so to do this kind of operations this JDBC API they given to us ok a Java class a Java application if it want to store data or if it want to retrieve data or if it want to update data or if, or if it want to delete data by using JDBC API what you can do you can do all this so just to maintain what to do from Java application for maintaining persistence layer we require to use JDBC by using JDBC what we can do we can make CRUD operations on database you can save data you can update data you can retrieve you can do any database operations from your Java API why we required a special JDBC API to talk with database generally databases will understand what SQL queries databases will understand SQL queries in case from my Java application if it is a Java application here if you have Java statements if you have Java statements here if you have Java statements here these Java statements if you want to convert into SQL understandable statements you required JDBC as a mediator here so this JDBC will do what it will convert our Java statements into database understandable SQL statements it will convert JDBC will convert our Java statements into database understandable SQL statements ok so to, to forward this Java statements into in the form of SQL statements we require to use JDBC so the JDBC will do what here it will convert our statements into SQL statements ok so here for this JDBC they given four types of drivers before going to drivers I will show you JDBC architecture JDBC architecture so JDBC coming to this JDBC architecture we have two layers in this architecture one is application layer application layer and database layer so coming to this application layer here your java application will exist application means your java application your java application java application in this application layer your java application will exist so here you can have some forms what are the fields you want to store into database that forms you can have in this application layer and when you submit this data here this JDBC API also will come under 
application layer itself. This JDBC API also will come under your application layer only. Means you need to maintain JDBC API under application layer, not under database part. Okay. When you submit your data, your data, your JDBC API will send it to driver classes. But the driver classes you need to maintain under database side. Okay. Here, let's say if you have database, Arkill database, or MySQL database, or Sybase, or any other databases. If you have databases here, like Arkill DB, if you have Arkill, <coughs> or if you have MySQL, or if you have DB2 databases here. So, if you want to talk with Arkill database, here we required a mediator. That is what actually driver. This driver will talk with your database and it will get response from your database. So to talk with Arkill database, you require Arkill drivers. These implementations are from database layers. Okay. If you want to talk with from your Java application by using JDBC API, if you want to talk with Arkill, you require to use a specific Arkill driver implementation okay so it will come under database layer and one more layer here you need to maintain mysql driver if you want to talk with mysql you require to use mysql driver here and if you want to talk with db2 you require to maintain db2 driver here what are all these these all are databases Arkill given by Arkill, MySQL it's a open source and DB2 from your IBM. So whenever you want to talk from your Java application, let's say if it is a Java application, from your Java application if you want to talk with any database, first you require to use here JDBC API. When you submit your data using JDBC API, this JDBC API by using your driver classes, it will interact with your databases. Okay, so here between your application and databases, you require to maintain JDBC and drivers, specific drivers we have to use. So when you <coughs> when you submit your data here, this JDBC will take that data and this JDBC will pass that data to drivers. Drivers will pass data to your databases. Then databases will give response to drivers. That same response they will forward to JDBC. Then this JDBC will convert the data in the form of Java understandable format. Okay. So if you want to make any CRUD operations, let's say if you want to do any save operation, if you want to do any save operation, whenever you submit data, first JDBC API will receive that data. Then that same data, it will pass to your driver classes. Driver classes will pass the data to Arkill database. But Arkill will understand what finally, if you want to store data into tables, what actually database will understand? If you have a table here along with columns, column 1, column 2, column 3, you need to pass your data in the form of SQL queries. So Java application will pass what Java statements, it will pass Java statements. So this Java statements, this JDBC API will receive and it will pass that statements to your driver classes. So then driver classes will do what they will convert that statements into SQL statements, they will convert your Java statements to SQL statements. Finally, this SQL statements, they will pass to your database. Then database will work based on this SQL statements. Okay. This is what actually JDBC architecture. So here, if your application, if it want to talk with databases, there are four types of drivers they given. There are four types of drivers. So that coming to types of drivers, types of drivers there are four types of drivers types of drivers there is one type 1 driver jdbc odbc bridge driver and the second one is native native api and the third one is third one is network network something third party drivers and the fourth one is 
प्योर प्योर जावा ड्राइवर द फोर्थ वन इज टीन ड्राइवर इट्स अ प्योर जावा ड्राइवर ओके देर आर फोर टाइप्स ऑफ ड्राइवर जेडीबीसी ओडीबीसी ब्रिज ड्राइवर एंड वन इज नेटिव आईपीए ड्राइवर एंड वन इज नेटवर्क थर्ड पार्टी ड्राइवर एंड द फोर्थ वन इज प्योर जावा ड्राइवर इट्स अ थिन ड्राइवर यू कैन कॉल इट एज थिन थिन ड्राइवर द फोर्थ वन इज थिन ड्राइवर ओके या कमिंग टू द फर्स्ट ड्राइवर using this first driver if you want to talk with your database by using jdbc odbc bridge driver if you want to talk with your database how the architecture will be here in case of type 1 driver in case of type 1 driver when your java application submits data when your java application submits its data JDBC, ODBC, Bridge Driver. In case of JDBC, ODBC, Bridge Driver, when your Java application, when your Java application submits its data, your JDBC API will receive that. your jdbc api will receive that data then this jdbc will pass that queries to open database application odbc application your jdbc will do what it will send that same data to odbc application it will send that same data to odbc application it will send your data to odbc application odbc will do what whenever you submit your java data java statements data this jdbc api will receive first this jdbc api will pass the data to odbc api odbc api then it will do what it will convert your data into open database connectivity calls odbc responsibility is what here it will convert your java statements converts java statements converts java statements into open database connectivity calls it will convert your data into open database connectivity calls it will convert your database calls into open database connectivity calls so then usually databases all the commercial databases they can understand open database connectivity calls so when a jdbc pass data into odbc application odbc application will convert your data into open database connectivity calls and any database can understand this open database connectivity calls so when you pass data using open database connectivity calls your databases can understand that open database connectivity calls here but in case of this type 1 driver your client wherever you are going to use jdbc odbc driver there the client must need to install one application odbc application along with your java application along with your database the client requires what odbc application also here one more application he need to install odbc application you required java you required database and you required one more application odbc application generally microsoft windows okay microsoft windows internally they will contain odbc by default they will provide this application along with their operating system okay along with your operating system installation they will provide one application to us odbc application so using that odbc application what you can do your java calls you can convert into open database connectivity calls okay so the dependency with this application is what in this application we have dependency of odbc so your yeah, application like if your application if you are going to make by using this jdbc odbc here you can note it requires odbc application java and database java and database and odbc application required here odbc application is required to make this application java database along with 
ODBC application. And one more thing, <coughs> this JDBC ODBC bridge driver is useful for only standalone applications. It is useful for only standalone applications. This driver is useful for only useful for only useful for only standalone applications. It is useful for standalone applications. It is useful for standalone applications in the sense your application and database need to contain in same machine. Your application, this Java application and as well as this database, they both need to be exist in same machine. You need to use machine. If it is a machine A, in that machine A itself your database need to exist, your Java application need to exist and your ODBC application also need to exist. Your three applications you must need to run on a single machine. That's why this is useful for standalone applications. Okay. In case if your database if it is there in something B machine, if your application if it is there in A machine, if this ODBC if it is there in some C machine, it is not useful. Okay. Your three applications must need to contain in a single machine. You need to install all these three applications into a single machine and it is useful for only standalone applications.